And I really think it's not to put it on the developers. I mean, easy to pick on developers. I mean, next to lawyers, we're the favorite class no, to pick on. No brokers. <laughs> I don't even know that I'd create a category for that. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but I think the, the issue is, is that you know, we, we do have an economic construct where if you're a developer, for-profit developer, I, just, I, you know, I have to say that it's not very glamorous, but the truth of it is to finance someone like Adam isn't easy. And so if you're going to pop up a community, number one, I'm not he was sure. He's nodding his head. Yeah. I'm not sure that that's the best way to build a community. I think the evolutionary process that goes along with what happened uh, with the Walentis properties is kind of the way it really ought to happen. But I think that the, in, the impetus to do it is, is, is the responsibility of many. And yes, the developers have to invest the time and take the risks, but um, the tenants also have to participate and the, and the community, as, as Adam defined it, really all have a role. And it isn't the work of just, of just one. So we need to move faster. We can't, it, well, Dumbo is amazing, I love Dumbo, my favorite place, I think 90% because of the person sitting to our left here. But, but it took a long time. How do we take that same opportunity in the new areas now and do it much faster? Because they exist around the city, in well, the city. I like to listen to Jed talk about like why it happened and how it happened, because it's kind of, when he discusses it, and I don't think he's giving himself anywhere near the credit, but it's like, it's like the peanut butter and the chocolate and the Reese's, like that it just was this it's combination art. that was somewhat, not like someone sat around and said, this is what I intend to do down in Dumbo, but Jed, you should speak about it because- No, but that's the truth though. I mean, the, the office piece, uh, the office piece in Dumbo really happened to us. I mean, Marion uh, is very kind and, she likes to give me lots of credit. Um, and we certainly did a lot of things right. But the truth is the office, uh, the office piece really happened to us. As an organization, uh, my father started the business in 1968. Our history as an organization was doing loft conversions in you know, gentrifying areas. They were early in Soho in the 70s. They were early in NoHo in the late 70s and early 80s. Um, and then he went to Dumbo, and all he knew that it was that he could convert all those buildings to apartments, and people would come to live there, right? People would come to live almost anywhere in New York, and they figured that out, and he bought them cheap enough that price was kind of irrelevant, and he knew people would come and live there. So he went and talked to the city, and the city was like, no, we will not rezone the neighborhood, go find office tenants. So they sat there for 15, 20 years, uh, and basically did nothing. It's a longer story, but I won't bore you all. Um, and in 1997, the Giuliani administration said, okay, we'll change the zoning. And we started converting the buildings to residential. And we had three buildings that had 50 plus, close to 45,000, 50,000 square foot floor plates. Uh, so the light and air, they were 200 foot squares, plus or minus a little bigger full city blocks, one of them did have a, light, have a light well in the middle and maybe you could have converted it. But the truth is, if those buildings were all 200 by, 100 by 200 foot blocks instead of 200 by 200 foot blocks, we would have converted all of them to residential and we would have fucked the whole thing up. That's absolutely the truth. Um, but they weren't, so we had a problem and we couldn't convert them to residential and we didn't know what to do. And we had an, a guy who we actually, who worked for the previous owner back in the 70s. It was a Helmsley Spear partnership. There was some young man from Ecuador who barely spoke English when we bought the properties, who's been there for 35 years. And in the mid 80s, when all our big tenants were going out of business, he started renting those spaces to artist studios because there were no tenants at any price that were gonna rent 40,000 foot space on the Dumbo waterfront in 1990. There were zero tenants at any price that were gonna go there. Um, so he started breaking up 50,000 foot floors into 1,000, 2,000 foot spaces, and the buildings were a disaster. They had six different singular elevators and lobbies strewn around the perimeter. They had nine different staircases. They were the world's most inefficient office buildings. Um, but we bought them cheap enough, it kinda didn't matter, and we pushed the rents from two to four to six to eight. You know, and now they're at 30, but, so we had all these artist studios and the artists didn't really care that there was like a gerbil pulling the elevator up and it moved like four feet a minute. And, uh, and you know, I mean, this is not glamorous that, stuff. That was a performance art piece. Uh, and so then when the first dot-com explosion happened in 2000, we kind of looked around and there were dozens of companies whose principals and human capital were living in Brooklyn 
and the garbage class C and D space in lower Manhattan that there was with this, what they thought they should go look at was terrible and was up to $40 a foot. And these people said, we'll deal with the fact the building doesn't have a lobby and the elevator takes 12 minutes to get me to my floor and the neighborhood's kind of weird and I can't buy a quart of milk and I'll go there for $8 a foot. Okay, and, that's, and then we looked around and we were like, wow, there are some real, as Adam says, creative tenants here. It's not just trust fund artists or kids doing some drugs or this and that. They're actual like real tenants with real visitors who will like start up here. And then we made a bunch of good decisions. Then we invested in the buildings uh, and we built a center core and we brought fiber optics to the buildings and we put in central air conditioning and did all those things and really cultivated it from there. So we were aware when it happened to us, but we did not think we were gonna create a two million square foot you know, incubator for creative companies which is kind of what's happened there uh, as an idea. <laughs>